So the problem I've got with most YouTube channels uh, when it comes to how to do work is that I find they're either too technical or not technical enough. So with my channel, I'm going to try to uh, try to hit that middle ground. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're talking about adding additional insulation to an attic over already blown in insulation. Now what we can see behind me here is, is, uh, is all the stuff I'm working with. We've got bundles of R40 to go up in the, uh, the garage. And I'll show you what I'm doing technique wise, the, the basics, so that if you want to do this, you can do it yourself. We've got the heater on. Upstairs in the attic is fairly warm and that's because there's a lack of insulation. A lot of my house heat's going up into the attic. That's why we're going to re-insulate and add some more to this. Which actually get pretty good savings, cost savings on my heating bills. If you're going to do this in the summer, it's going to be wicked hot up there. And you've got to wear long sleeves when you're working with insulation. Uh, so I think it's best to do it in the wintertime. One of the problems I ran into when I started this job was um, I wanted to use R40 insulation. You see it's uh, six pieces in, the, in each bundle. The 24 inches by 48 inches, which, whatever, it does become an issue when I'm trying to get it up there. The entrance to my attic is about 32 inches by 32 inches. The insulation bats are 48 inches long. But if I had gone any bigger, I wouldn't be able to fit that up there. And of course, I didn't measure any of that stuff before I spent a couple thousand dollars on insurance on the insulation. So definitely take your time make sure you measure the entrances and everything that you're going to move this stuff through make sure you got the space and the clearance to get it in otherwise you're in for a whole new heartache There's not a lot of room to move. I got my bundles placed out here. I've already started laying out the bundles in some spots. And we'll keep working on that as we go. Now, when you're up here, especially with this loose fill, you see this loose fill here, it was blown in. You wanna make sure you wear a mask. You don't wanna breathe this stuff in. I'm laying it across the studs. Uh, the joist, the ceiling joist. Uh, so, if you look up above me there, you can see the ceiling joist that I would be working with. I'm basically laying it like those boards are there up in my attic. Um, that way it just lays atop and then it's actually got blown in fill from the uh, from the ceiling line up to the top of the joist, just slightly over top of the joist. Making sure that you've got space between the, uh, the ceiling here and where you put your insulation. So what you can see is I've put in Blue baffling. We'll try to walk a little bit further along. See if you can see it better. You see it all in there. All along. There it is. You can see the blue baffling. To make sure there's enough airspace. And then you try to do it where there isn't any baffling as well. I put baffling in uh, every other spot. So it's kind of what we're looking for. Is you've got to cut them around all the beams. So you can see. As we move over here past the work light, it's so bright. You see how I've got these beams, and what you have to do is you really gotta cut it in around the beams like that. Otherwise, you're not gonna get, uh, you're gonna have too many air pockets, uh, dead space, and that's just not gonna insulate quite as well. We're cutting the bats so they fit in these spaces. Sometimes you can just cut the bats so they fit around the board, kind of like this one. You can see there's, I put a slot in there so I can squeeze that one in there, and it'll fit around there is making sure that you're walking very carefully up here. So I'm stepping on just these, these beams here, these here. So they're in line with these trusses. You wanna make sure you're stepping on those, not in between where you've got 
only drywall holding up, or it'd be acting as your ceiling in the uh, rooms below. If you step there, you run a really good risk of falling through. So there you have it. So you can see how I'm laying these bats out perpendicular to the trusses and just laying it on top of the loose fill. Uh, you'll get a little bit of compression of the loose fill that way, but it's not going to be substantial enough to actually affect the R value. <sighs> Like I said, you gotta be careful where you're walking. And what you're doing when you're up here. But uh, as you can see, it's starting to look pretty good. Bats are all laid down, just about all laid down. 